is to uh, observe and, uh, and assess what is happening. Uh, we have our chair who will be uh, leading the team and he will be speaking more to their activities. His Excellency Yemi Osinbajo, Professor Yemi Osinbajo, who is the immediate former Vice President of the Republic of Nigeria, who is leading our team. And with us also today is Mr. Linford Andrews, who is head of the Electoral Support Section of the Commonwealth Secretariat. And of course, um, Ms. Abiola Sulmonu, who is the head of the Africa Section at the Commonwealth Secretariat. So without uh, further ado, I will hand it over to our chair, uh, Professor Yemi Osimbajo, to uh, deliver his remarks, after which we will have some uh, time to take uh, questions from journalists. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Josephine. Um, first, let me apologize for firmly wearing my mask. I'm uh, conscious that I don't want to infect uh, you with anything. I've had uh, been slightly under the weather, so I just need to wear my mask uh, for the entire period. So I'm sorry that you will not be able to see my full, all my expressions on my face. Of members of the media, fellow observers, citizens of Sierra Leone, it's a privilege to be here once again in Freetown, and I must say that I'm at home. Today I'm here not only as a neighbor and a fellow African, but also as a fellow Commonwealth citizen standing for the precious values that we all share, peace, democracy, the rule of law, and good governance. And it's an honor for me to chair the Commonwealth Observer Group to witness the multi-chair elections taking place within the coming days on 24th of June. Our 12-member observer group was constituted by the Commonwealth Secretary General, the Right Honorable Patricia Scotland, KC, following an invitation from the Electoral Commission of Sierra Leone to observe the poll. Members have been drawn from across the entire Commonwealth, representing a wealth of experience and include experts in law, in politics, election administration, Alone, dating back to its independence, when the country became an independent state within the Commonwealth in 1961. The Commonwealth has, has observed every election in Syria alone since the end of the Civil War in 2002, as well as the general elections of 1996. In other words, the Commonwealth has been an enduring companion of the nation on this extraordinary journey witnessing the country's evolution into what it is today. Today we recognize the significance of these elections to the people of Sierra Leone, the region, and the global community. And we wholly appreciate the challenges that they present. The gains achieved over the last two decades of peacetime is a testament to the democratic spirit of the people and must be cherished, nurtured, and leveraged for continued peaceful and sustainable development. This is why as a Commonwealth Observer Group, we're honored to be a part of this important democratic process. But let me be clear, the Commonwealth Observer Group has no executive role. Its function is not to interfere with or direct in any way, but to observe the process as a whole and to make recommendations accordingly. We will observe the pre-election environment, polling day activities, and the post-election period. In particular, we will consider whether the conditions exist for credible elections, including a fair election environment, whether public media has been impartial, 
the transparency of the entire process, whether voters are free to express their will, and whether the counting and results process is transparent. We will then report on whether the elections have been conducted in accordance to the standards, to, in accordance with the standards to which Sierra Leone has committed itself, including its national laws and its regional and international commitments. In conducting our duties, we will be guided by the principles of neutrality, impartiality, objectivity, and independence. As we are here in our individual capacities as responsible and experienced Commonwealth citizens, our assessment will be our own and not that of any member government. That said, we have a very active period ahead of us. Over the coming days, we'll be meeting stakeholders, including the Electoral Commission for Sierra Leone, government representatives, political parties, security agencies, civil society groups, citizen and international observer groups, diplomats, and the media. From the 22nd of June, we will deploy our observers in small teams across parts of the country to observe the voting, counting, and results process, as well as meet with other stakeholders in respective locations. On election day, we will observe the opening, the voting, the closing, counting, and the results management process. We will issue an interim statement on our preliminary findings on the 26th day of June before members of the group depart Sierra Leone on the 30th of June. A final report will then be prepared and submitted to the Commonwealth Secretary General and subsequently shared with relevant stakeholders and made publicly available. Friends and colleagues, you are well aware that this is a crucial and delicate period and it is my hope that our presence here affirms the unwavering support of the Commonwealth to this country and its democratic processes. The eyes of more than 2.5 billion of the Commonwealth, of whom are 60% persons who are under the age of 30, will be upon Sierra Leone, watching in solidarity and hope. The peaceful and prosperous future of the nation lies in your hands, and in that future, violence, division, and hate cannot play a part. The hard lessons that history has taught us through the tragic loss of lives and livelihoods we cannot afford to repeat. Therefore, as 3.3 million registered voters come forth to exercise their democratic rights on election day, as this great nation expresses its will for its future, may peace and justice and national unity prevail above all. And we enjoin all political parties and their supporters to uphold the commitments of the Electoral Pledge to free, fair, and violence-free elections signed by the political parties barely two weeks ago. And we encourage all citizens to do their part to ensure that a peaceful and credible process takes place on the 24th of June. As the great Madiba Nelson Mandela once emphasized, is not our diversity that divides us, only the division between those who cherish democracy and those who do not. On behalf of the Commonwealth Observer Group, I wish the people of Sierra Leone well as they embark upon this historic election. I thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. And that was the official statement, the official statement from the chair of the Commonwealth Observer Group, uh, Professor Yemi Osimbajo. At this time, we, are, we can take some questions from the media. Please, when you do have a question, raise your hand, introduce yourself and the media where you come, where, that you are representing and, and your question, and we'll do our best to uh, fit everything the amount of time that we have. Thank you. Yes, sir, please. Uh. Just a yes. My name is Abu S. Sarawali. I'm, re I'm a freelance journalist who has um, writing for independent observers well and others. Um, my question is um, uh, the Commonwealth observing observers T 
University is here. And uh, Sierra Leone um, currently looking at the registration of voters. Um, there are lots of impediments within that um, area, which of course is the core um, um, thing that uh, should be sorted out. Because the reason is, the opposition parties are crying power because of the tatters that are not comprehensive, standard, transparent, and they are not coherent. So how can we go to the polls without no standard data that are clear, crystal, to everyone, you as observers? So what is your observation on that? Thank you very much. Uh, we'll just take uh, two at once, just because there's a lot of hands starting to come up. Joseph Johnson, AYB. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't have the name. I didn't have the name. Uh, the name. The name. The name. Uh, observers in some parts of the name. Joseph Johnson, AYB. Okay. In some parts of the country. We want to know the total number of observers. And, and one more question, please, say that on I'm um, uh, Prema James Malo from the Future Media. The question that is of, is about uh, the election process, specifically looking at the violence, hmm? violence aspect, because that one is very much key, and we want to actually know how best uh, is the Commonwealth, you know, be there to actually protect us, especially with the journalists. <laughs> So, our chair, colleagues, Commonwealth colleagues, we have had those three questions. Um, Can we take your response, please? Uh, thank you very much uh, for the questions. And um, I think the first question is uh, the one by Abu, uh, who wanted to know. Um, who was concerned about the whole process and the problems associated with the registration of voters. Uh, let me say that um, we are, we've heard uh, those, some of those complaints, and of course there are other complaints, we've heard uh, those complaints, and um, we, have, we have only just arrived, but our position is that there must be uh, consistent and uh, continuing consultations with all the relevant organs, including the Electoral Commission. And we think that it's important that um, these complaints are thoroughly investigated by the appropriate authorities and that uh, remedy is sought and, uh, and obtained wherever uh, that can be done. But our concern at this point is to ensure that we, in our own role, as much as possible, speak with, and I've mentioned this already, we're going to be consulting with all of the relevant bodies, and these complaints will also be brought to their attention. We expect that you know, these uh, issues will be taken up and thoroughly investigated and actions will be taken by the relevant authorities. But again, just to mention that our role is the role of observers. We are not, uh, we are not to control direct interfere but as observers, of course, we will uh, do the best we can to communicate the, 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 the problems and issues that have been identified to the appropriate authorities, and we intend to continue to, uh, to do so as the uh, days go by, which is why we have extensive consultations with everyone, the political parties, uh, the electoral commission, and uh, even the judiciary, we are going to be speaking to practically uh, everyone, and of course the, the candidates. Uh, I think that that's a question, and uh, then um, Joseph Johnson wanted to know how many observers we are aware. We have in our, this particular team 12 observers, and we have a deployment plan which we hope uh, will enable us to give uh, an accurate assessment of how the, the electoral process has gone. 
uh, and you must understand that we, no observer group can have uh, the number of observers that it will take to go to practically every polling station, and that's not the intention. The intention is for us to get a feel for uh, how the process pre-election, and of course pre-election means consultations which we're making with institutions and with uh, political parties and all of that. So we understand the pre-election process. Our, our role is a whole of election cycle role. So election day is important, but pre-election, election day and post-election are also very important. The whole results process and all that, which are all institutional management issues. So, and we have a very, uh, I must say, a very experienced team uh, from across uh, the Commonwealth, from several countries of the Commonwealth. Many of them have worked in different nations as observers. So we expect that they'll bring their skills and their experience to bear on this very important assignment, uh, the elections of the 24th of June. Uh, I think Brahma wanted to know uh, how, uh, how the Commonwealth can protect um, journalists. <laughs> Frankly, I am not entirely certain how, <laughs> how we can, uh, at least physically. But let me say to you that, um, as you know, the Commonwealth is uh, committed to freedom of speech, freedom of expression, to the independence of uh, journalism, to the independence of the press. And... Um, the rule of law, and all the pillars upon which uh, proper democracy stand. And we continue to express those commitments everywhere we go. We communicate those commitments to governments and to institutions. And this is what we support. So it is from that perspective that we can, uh, is that, pers that perspective of support uh, and uh, our commitments to you and to the process that we can uh, protect your rights. Uh, but uh, of course, as you know, uh, that is the extent to which um, yeah, we, we, we can go. But clearly, uh, we, you, you, they do, do not be in any doubt whatsoever that we support uh, your rights to freely seek information, publish information, of course, subject to the laws and constitutions of Syria law. Thank you. So we'll take the other. so many reports and allegations of you know, attacks, intimidation on individuals. We see kids of maybe 10 years old being beaten and all that, so videos have been circulated. Um, what is the Commonwealth position on that? Because the undertaking for peace was signed in the presence of the head of Commonwealth Secretariat. What is the Commonwealth position in terms of protecting the safety and security of Sierra Leoneans will be voted. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. My name is Dr. Shiller of Choice Media Group. The name is? Dr. Shiller. Professor, you made a statement that you are here to observe and to make a recommendation. It's you with the process of the election in the process in this country. We've heard so much about this election with regard to the peace process and counter counter 
It's a mediation statement between the, the two political parties, the main opposition and the, the ruling um, political party. You are going to recommend what are you going to recommend if there is maybe some infringements or some causes that will cause more damage to this election in the process as we expected. Are there any other way that Commonwealth can make recommendations before the elections or to some of the things they've, they've seen that will hinder the progress of peace with the legal election in the process? Thank you. My name is Patrick Salia, and I work for a state broadcaster, Sierra Leone Broadcasting Corporation, as well as you. So, Professor, on a scale from 1 to 10, how would the observer group rate the election hearing process thus far on a scale from 1 to 10? Hmm. And did I hear you say you'll be here till the end of this month? Yes. So what if there's possible one of how are you going to manage that? Okay. Hello. We're going to dress those three for now. Sorry, I just want to be sure that I got your last question. Mm -hmm. the, on the scale of one to ten, how will you rate the preparations? The, the entire election. Okay. The entire, okay, the entire electionarian process. If there is a runoff, okay. Okay, and then, okay, and then runoff, okay. All right, thank you. Uh, so I start with the question from Juma. Uh, who wanted to know what the attitude of the Commonwealth will be, uh, especially with respect to many reported cases of violence and, uh, and some reported cases of intimidation, especially because uh, the Commonwealth, uh, not, uh, not only the Commonwealth Secretary, Secretary General witnessed the electoral pledge, and I've referred to that also in the course of this presentation. I want to say first that um, the commitment to peace is one that we take very seriously, and I believe that every Sierra Leonean takes seriously. Mm -hmm. And it is a commitment which, uh, if you look at the Electoral Pledge, and especially the speech of the Commonwealth Secretary, Secretary General on that day, there's a great emphasis on the role of leaders and leadership in ensuring that this peace is maintained. And this role is particularly crucial because leaders make the difference between stability and instability, and in many cases between peace and chaos. What leaders say, how leaders conduct themselves, is usually what prompts supporters and, 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 and uh, onlookers and others. So the emphasis for the Commonwealth is on the responsibility of leaders, leadership and institutions. And we have made this point very clear. And in our consultations with political parties and with leaders and with institutional heads, we're going to emphasize this. What the world witnessed when the electoral pledge was signed was heartwarming and very uplifting because we saw a commitment of leaders across the political spectrum who, did, who said we're going to be committed to ensuring that there is a violence-free election, free, fair, violence-free election. And we understand the fragility of, 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 of the situations, not just here in Sierra Leone, but Sierra Leone has experienced very difficult times. Those of us who live in, in this, in this sub-region and live in this continent know how fragile you know, uh, situations can be. And we cannot afford a situation where there, is, uh, where there is chaos or loss of lives or livelihoods. Nothing 
is worth that kind of experience again. Which is why it's important for us to continue to emphasize to leaders across the political spectrum that we cannot afford a situation where the pursuit of political power results in the death or loss of lives of individuals or their livelihoods. So this is where we stand as the Commonwealth. And as I said, we will make sure that we emphasize this to institutional heads and to let everyone know and to let them realize that this is what the international community expects, especially of leadership. Uh, yeah, I think it was Sherlock who wanted to know, uh, considering all the statements we've heard so far about intimidation, can we make recommendations before the elections? Well, we cannot. Uh, what, what, what we intend to do, and as I've said, the process that we're undertaking at this point is a process of consultation and engagement with institutions, with political heads, uh, with uh, heads of political parties, with uh, um, the civil society, with media, with everyone especially all of those stakeholders who are important in this electoral process. So while open recommendations is not uh, what we intend to do, I mean, of course, we've said here today what our views are about stability, about you know, uh, how the process should be free, fair, credible, credible, transparent, you know, and inclusive process. But what is important at this point is not to make some, you know, uh, public uh, recommendations. At this stage, it's important for us to engage the institutional, the institutions, to engage the uh, major players in the political process, so that they understand clearly where we stand as an observer group where the Commonwealth stands and where the rest of the world stands because everyone is looking in on the elections here in Syria alone. So what's important for us today is to ensure that we convey that, that to them and also the concerns that have been expressed, all the concerns that have been expressed, all these concerns you're expressing about intimidation, about violence and all of that. These are concerns that uh, citizens have expressed have been expressed in the press, that individuals have expressed, uh, politicians and people have expressed. So these concerns, of course, must be thoroughly investigated. We must ensure that they are not allowed to continue or to fester in any way, uh, such as to jeopardize the outcome of the elections. But at this stage of the process that we're engaging in is actually talking to those who we believe uh, will be important in the process. And um, we want to make sure that they clearly understand uh, where uh, the, the whole world, as it were, stands. Uh, Patrick wanted to know on the scale of the engineering process. Uh, you know, when you <laughs> say one to 10, it's my doctor who always asks me that, you know, about pain. On the scale of one to 10, how much pain do you feel? You know, let me just say that first, uh, you know, it's again, it will be unfair uh, within a day or two of having arrived here to start uh, making an assessment of that sort. <laughs> I mean, we barely arrived, you know. I think that um, at this stage, we're unable to make that kind of, uh, I'm unable to make that kind of um, uh, specific finding as to where the rate, uh, how we see the entire process. But that, of course, will, will emerge, especially in our interim report, which will, be, uh, will come on the 26th. But I think what is important for us is taking into account what we're hearing, what is being said, and uh, ensuring that that is made uh, the subject of the consultations that we're having with the important stakeholders in this process, you know. So at this point, we're not uh, able to make um, clear. Then with respect to the electioneering, uh, with respect to the runoff, if, uh, in the event of the runoff, in the event of the runoff, the Commonwealth position, of course, is that we will assess that and um, 
there's a need for us to observe that process, we certainly will put in place a, a, a system of assessing the process. But it will be, but there will be time to consider all of that. So we will not necessarily run away <laughs> because there's a runoff. <laughs> we'll be, yes. Thank you, sir. So we'll take a few more from yourself. Do you want a question and, and yourself as well? Okay. And, yes. My name is Isaac Yenisa Kamara, editor of Africa, Hidden Voice Magazine. According to what you have got from our speaker, the Commonwealth has a wealth of experience in these matters. They have observed other countries that are coming here. And as he has told us, he is still on the consultation stage. The observation cuts across before, during, and after the elections. And I'm sure we have been engaging appropriate stakeholders in these matters. So what can we tell us about the United Front? of these stakeholders as they are going to impose. How can you, how, what can you tell us about the one-mindedness of these stakeholders as they are going to impose in as far as your observation is concerned in one? Yes. Dear Excellency, I am Emmanuel from representing the Citizens United for Peace from the US. Um, is it to say right now that you are the position and the stakeholders now have signed um, doctor's agreement. But the government lies with all suspicion because we as patients and civilians observe that we have a virus and also we are intoxicated with the power. So is it true to say that now actually the healing has to be done with the civilians better than the commonwealth? I'm not sure I understand you clearly. one-mindedness as you going into the election now and we are just to make any kind of judgment on that we have to consult we have to speak to them we have to hear them and we're just in that process you know so i i don't think that one it would be fair to say anything about what the politicians feel what the political uh, heads of political parties or candidates fail at this point. I think it's it because we're just so talking to them. But we hope that will be united around first the peace and stability first 
of this country because really at the end of the day that's uh, that's crucial you know whatever uh, political outcomes there are you know we must uh, emphasize that the country must remain a country where you know people can live in, in peace and pursue their livelihoods uh, in you know in a, in a peaceful environment uh, Emmanuel uh, you said that we are the physicians and um, first and I think I <laughs> am uh, intrigued by your uh, by, by, by the metaphors that you have used. But um, I must say that uh, we cannot credit ourselves being physicians. I mean, I, <laughs> I certainly will not credit myself with being a physician. But I agree with you that the future and fate of this nation lies in the hands of the Union, without a doubt. Which is why, you know, we emphasize that the process by which leadership is chosen, is one that is credible, is inclusive, is transparent, gives everyone a fair chance to express their views. But we also emphasize that all of these processes and everything else, you know, must take into account the fact that people, it is people that we're talking about, the people of a nation, men, women, children, you know, millions of them that you are talking about. And that we, we must just always bear that in mind, that we're not, the, the, this is not just statistics, it's not just numbers. It's about people, lives of people. So I think, you know, uh, I agree with you that um, this lies in the hands of the Rolonians, but we also emphasize that the, the role of leadership is particularly important, political leadership is particularly important on all sides of the political spectrum. The role of leaders is crucial because leaders determine to a large extent how people react to situations and how people react to circumstances. So I agree with you that this responsibility is that of Sierra Leoneans and I just emphasize that uh, it's it, it also more so uh, the responsibility of leaders uh, James, what is the most salient risk factor that will affect the democratic process? In my view, that that will be chaos. That will be that will be instability. It will be violence and chaos. I think that that will compromise everything. It will compromise not just the elections, but but the future stability and development of the country. So for me, that is that's 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 an, that is something that we must work against in every possible way. Which is why we take, you know, all the trouble about peace uh, and electoral pledge, you know, and all that, and everything else. I think that if there is one factor that could dis that could uh, affect the democratic process, in, you know, disastrously, that would be uh, chaos. That would be violence and uh, instability. I think those are the. Yeah. Thank you, sir. We'll just have the last uh, questions here, ma'am, and, and, and Matt, Matt here, our two ladies, and then we can end the round of questions. Thank you. My name is Elisa Nardi, I'm a election researcher. Um, I want to ask about the equities in the remit of the Commonwealth Observer Mission to look at the proportion of representation within the contestants' uh, pool, and also um, to look at the results hereafter, and how this has, a, this has been affected by the recent passage of the gender equality bill. How it has affected the gender equality? Okay. Good morning, my name is Princess Pias. I work for Radio Democracy. I would just like to debate a little bit with regards to charity and uh, transparency because you have already stated that. My concern is the independent assessment of whether the election has been conducted in a credible manner because it was stated in the media memo scenes. So, when will we uh, um, have access to the reports? 
And then secondly, another one has to do with the team. It is, it's comprised of um, experts from different fields. It has to do with law, human rights, media agenda, diplomacy and election administration. How would this help um, in the electionary process? Okay, thank you very much. Um, I think Olufola wanted to know about uh, whether we're paying attention to uh, the representation of women, especially in the light of the uh, gender equality bill. The 30%, I believe, is the one that uh, specifies that at least 30%, uh, there should be 30% representation of women. That's a very major concern of the Commonwealth Observer Group. And uh, not only do we have um, representation um, in, in our Observer Group of um, expertise that will consider this issue, we're also consulting uh, with a number of women group, uh, women's groups. And uh, we'll be speaking, I think, even today to uh, a group that will assist us in, in looking at this issue and paying attention to exactly what is going on uh, with respect to representation of women. Uh, for the uh, Commonwealth, uh, as you know, one of the pillars for us of credible elections is inclusivity. And inclusivity, of course, uh, emphasizes uh, the women, I mean, aside from yeah, the, the role of of other vulnerable groups, of, of vulnerable groups, the role of women is also very important. And here in Sierra Leone, particularly so, because of the very large number of registered women voters, you know. But I think it's in, with respect to political participation, you know, that um, there is some emphasis and we intend to make uh, findings on that. And we intend to consult, you know, so that we're able to uh, make a firm you know, assessment of what is going on and make our recommendations because uh, the issue that is being grappled with in very many Commonwealth countries is the issue of, uh, of uh, inclusivity, gender representation, and we will make our recommendations, especially based on of the knowledge and um, expertise that's been gathered uh, from other Commonwealth countries. Uh, engagements with other Commonwealth countries, we'll, and we'll do the best we can uh, to pass that on so that um, the institutions and political parties can be informed of best practices here and there and how to ensure that we actually get results from legislation that um, promises proportional representation for women. Um, patient, uh, sorry, Princess wanted to know about uh, when you'll get the first reports of uh, independent assessment. Uh, the first reports, the first official report, which uh, will be made public, will be on the 26th of June. That's our interim report. Thereafter, we will finalize, we'll have a final report, which will uh, be concluded and then published and made available. But the very first report, which will, where you'll find our assessment, will be on the 26th of June. That will be the interim report. Uh, which will be published. I think I left out a last point that you should raise, aside from the... Oh, yeah, yes. You wanted to know how the different uh, expertise will contribute to the final results. I think that um, practically every feature, especially of things that uh, the Commonwealth uh, believes to be important in, uh, in a democratic process. Uh, we have expertise in every one of those areas. So we have expertise in government, election administration, we have 
there are, for example, amongst us even, you know, uh, someone who has been uh, electoral commissioner, you know, in a country that has over 900 million uh, voters. I mean, I used to think, I used to think that Nigeria, <laughs> I used to think that we, 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 we were, that we had large numbers, about 90, but uh, Dr. Zaidi is here from India, where he served meritoriously as a local commissioner, and that was a close position, uh, registered voters. So that kind of expertise obviously will help a great deal here in Syria, Leone, where <laughs> the numbers are relatively smaller, <laughs> you know. And so it, so, so, so it will be, and, and that's exactly what you'll find with a lot of the experience and expertise that's available with media, for example, those who've served, you know, uh, and who have watched uh, media, you know, I think there's Sangwani who is here, who has been practically across, uh, you know, Africa, not just monitoring and observing elections, but especially with particular attention to the media. So there are, there's a wide range of expertise. We have uh, two justices of courts in the Commonwealth who are here. These are judges of the courts. We are also going to be speaking to the judiciary, and they will be speaking to the judiciary. So there is a, the, this expertise is very crucial, and for of course for gender rights and uh, ensuring balance, we have uh, that level of expertise here as well. People who have considerable experience. So I think that the expertise we'll find here will be extremely useful in coming to uh, an assessment of, uh, in, in, you know, uh, coming to an assessment of the way that the entire electoral cycle here uh, has gone and uh, will certainly help in our ability to assist uh, the institutions and assist uh, the political process here as much as uh, that is possible uh, with the reports that we'll be submitting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, um, everyone, thank you for making the time to be here with us. That concludes today's press conference. Please note that the chair's speech and also a press release that we will issue shortly after this will be available on our website. And if you've sent me your email, I can send it directly to you or via WhatsApp. So please, uh, I think most uh, everybody I has your uh, contact details. So we will be sending that uh, to you. Sorry, we don't have any hard copies. But there will be the speech and the, uh, the press release. Um, as mentioned by the chair, our next uh, press conference will be on the 26th. And in the interim, if you do have any media engagements while at the polls, I'll also let you all know. My name is Josephine Latusef. You would have gotten my um, context by now. I'd like to also thank the Sierra Leone uh, uh, Association of Journalists for assisting us in disseminating the information and also AYV who is streaming this live to the people of Sierra Leone. Thank you very much. Um, uh, have a good day.